Once analysis is complete, we can look at the results. Let's start by selecting intensities. We can now see the wavelength intensities measured by the detector in counts per second. To take a look at the subarray plot, simply double click on the measurement of interest. The subarray plot and wavelength finder now appear at the bottom of the screen. To take a better look at the subarray, use the maximize button. The subarray plot now fills the screen, where we can see more detailed information on the peaks and backgrounds. To return to the intensities, use the restore button. To see a different plot, simply click on the measurement of interest. On the subarray plot, the bars marked C represent the central pixels measuring the peak intensity. The L and R bars represent the left and right backgrounds respectively. We can extend the measurement areas by selecting the empty boxes next to them, or click active bars to deselect them. When you are happy, you can apply the changes by clicking on the green tick. So when we move to the next standard, we can see that these changes have been applied to all the subarrays for this wavelength. As we can see, this sample has a large background interference, so we can remove the right-hand background by deselecting the active cells, and then applying the changes. To find out what the interference might be, left-click on the peak. The wavelength finder suggests molybdenum, but as the peak is at 221.664 nanometers, it could either be molybdenum or silica. As the samples are tap water, it is likely silica, in the form of sand, is the interference here. To overlay and compare all of the subarray plots for this wavelength, click on the Wavelength column header. This overlays all of the selected subarrays on a single plot. If we select the next button, we can move from one wavelength to the next. We can also open up one of the samples in order to look at each repeat separately. This also provides us with more information on the repeats, such as the mean and standard deviation. Now let's have a look at the concentrations. The table shows the calculated concentrations of the analysed samples, along with the quality control recoveries. To view the calibration graphs, double click on the calibration cell for the required element. The calibration graph and statistical information appear at the bottom of the screen. For a better view, use the maximise button. The calibration graph now fills the screen, along with statistical data. To alter the settings of this data, such as the number of decimal places, use the settings button. In this menu, the display settings can be altered. Let's change the R squared value to 5 decimal places. We can see that the R squared value now displays 5 decimal places. To return to the concentration data, use the restore button. To find more information on the calibration standards, open the calibration block. The measured and known concentrations of each standard are shown. You can drill down to find more information on a particular standard. Further information on the repeats is shown. For a better view, I will close the calibration block. Let's look at the quality control samples. Click on a relevant cell. A graphical representation of the quality control limits and calculated recovery is shown below. We can select the entire QC sample to overlay the recoveries of all analytes. Every analyte is now overlaid onto this graph. We can drill down to find more information about the QC sample. Data on all repeats is shown. By selecting the calibration chart and using the maximize button, we can see where the sample lies on the calibration plot. For clarity, I will close the additional information. From the data, we can see that the cadmium 228.802 calibration plot is not linear. We can change this by opening the method parameters. And going to the quantification page, we can change the fit type for this wavelength to second order. If we then return to concentrations, we can see that the calculated concentration values have immediately changed. If we maximize the calibration plot, we can see that the quadratic calibration fit has been applied. To organize the result data by label, click on the Label Filter button and select the option required. With our QC data, we can highlight all results for a single wavelength. This then plots all the QC data for a single wavelength. The samples can also be filtered by sample type. If you wish to save any changes made, such as the background positions or calibration fit types, click the Save button. Add any comments and click OK.